The Wedding Cake House was built around 1868 by a, a, a local architect named Perez Mason for a, an industrialist named John Kendrick. And Kendrick grew up on a farm, came from a sort of a laboring background, but he became an iron molder and worked in mill workshops, cotton mills. Uh, and in those workshops, he uh, found a way to standardize some of the equipment used on these massive power looms. And they became the primary resource for mills around the world. And so he built this house uh, at the end of Broadway as a monument to his wealth and social status. But also he and Perez Mason, the architect, and their families were very close and would spend a lot of time on Martha's Vineyard at the Wesleyan Grove Camp Meeting Ground, a Methodist church camp meeting ground that dates back to 1835. And this is where Perez Mason himself, the architect, developed this uh, gingerbread, Victorian Gothic gingerbread style. And so I can see John Kendrick asking Perez Mason, build me a house that looks like the wonderful village of gingerbread cottages that we spend our summers in. Our organization shares the connection of female leadership and entrepreneurship with the Taroki legacy of the building. The location and history of the building as a famous site of a women-owned design business makes it an ideal project to complement our current facility, mission, and program. Our goal is to ground innovation and creative entrepreneurship in a historical context by building a site that connects the region's history of design and textile manufacturing to current practices in art and design fields. Our hope is to showcase Rhode Island as a place steeped in design thinking and visionary approaches. When we first came into the space, it was so clear just the connection to the Tarochi history and legacy um, was just too perfect. I mean, um, having an organization that supports female identified artists and having this connection to the history and the legacy of this building um, with female entrepreneurship and textile and design industry. Um, it really felt as if the stars were aligning and that um, we needed to we needed to develop this space. And actually, you know, no one else was going to come in and save this building and have programming and a mission that aligned with its history. The mission of Dirt Palace Public Projects is twofold. One, to enhance the cultural life of the Olneyville neighborhood of Providence, Rhode Island, by producing public art exhibitions, facilitating artist residencies, and building relationships between artists, educators, and the community at large through educational events focused on street side public displays, as well as lectures, artist talks, and workshops and two, to create opportunities for female identified artists and other people historically marginalized within the arts. When completed, the building will house a project-based artist in residence program on the third floor that is supported by earned income from short-term rentals on the second floor. Artist talks, programming, and exhibitions will happen on the first floor. Other people coming along and being excited about it has made such a difference, and so I think that's the thing that's exciting. And seeing people, um, you know, who kind of are interested in the house also put together the pieces about kind of thinking about how women connect to it and why that's important and thinking big picture about like what it means for culture and society to have models of women and immigrants as entrepreneurs and as successful. So I think that's a, and seeing like all kinds of people really resonate with those stories I think has been really cool and I think it's um, made the house, I think the house really brings a lot to kind of our project and our organization, which is um, not something I think we anticipated from the outset, was how many people who would generally not care about supporting women artists have really been excited about what we're doing. The Taroki sisters immigrated from Guarcino, Italy in the early 1900s. Anna Taroki was the older sister and clearly the force in the relationship between these two sisters as they became Providence couturiers. They arrived in Providence around 1907, and they were in independent business by 1911, and had made enough money that Anna was able herself to buy the Wedding Cake House in 1915. And for the next 30 years, the Wedding Cake House was a center of Providence high fashion. I think that's why so many people are excited about the project, is that there will be this public component. So unlike other projects that have um, tried to develop this space, 
which was separating it into four or five condos, those, or they would have been private uses. And so the fact that when we're open, people will be able to come and experience the building and that it's open to them, I think has really garnered us a lot of support. And I always get excited about unlikely people kind of crossing paths. And I think the idea of people who are interested in history, you know, crossing paths with artists and figuring out what their commonalities are, that's the kind of stuff that like, excites me as an organizer and or curator or you know th those kind of connections that happen when people who don't realize that they have things in common find themselves in common spaces or being excited by the same space or working in the same space so that's the stuff that I really look forward to.